I'd like to call the uh, May 23rd, 2022 meeting of the Greenville City Council to order. I'm Mayor P.J. Connolly and I'll be presiding over tonight's meeting. First, I'd like to call on Councilmember Meyerhofer for the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. I would just like to observe a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Connolly. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Glover. Council Member Daniels. Present. Council Member Bell. Here. Council Member Smiley. Here. Council Member Meyerhofer. I'm here. Council Member Litchfield. Present. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to the approval of tonight's agenda. Madam Manager, are there any recommended changes? No changes this evening, Mayor. I would like to uh, pull, I should say remove item number seven and move that down underneath item number nine uh, of the consent agenda. Okay, so do, uh, uh, so um, a vote on item seven. Uh, Separately, seven. I just Separately. like, yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Move to approve the agenda as revised. Second. Yeah. All right, motion has been made by Councilmember Smiley, second by Councilmember Meyerhofer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to special recognitions. Madam Manager. So I will call forward Mr. Wood and Mr. Matt. Thank you. Well, right here in the middle. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Great. Um, it's always my pleasure as city manager to recognize the great work of our staff, and I have an opportunity tonight to do that and to recognize Johnny Wood, who is an application manager with Information Technology, and Lieutenant Mike Montaigne with the Greenville Police Department. Each year, the city of Greenville selects a couple of our employees to participate in the Chambers Leadership Institute. Um, and this year, Lieutenant Montaigne and Yanni participated on behalf of the city. The Chambers Leadership Institute is an eight-month program which covers key topics such as industry, education, government, healthcare, community needs, and leadership development. And I just wanted to take a moment to recognize our city graduates and to thank them for participating in this program and representing the city of Greenville. So please join me in thanking Lieutenant Montaigne and Ms. Wood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Very good. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. And Chief Holtzman, do you want to stand up? And I'd like to call forward Megan, Megan Styron. Good evening. Again, another great opportunity tonight to recognize Megan. Um, Megan is a North Carolina, let me see, law enforcement accreditation assessor. Is that right? As well as a power DMS manager. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. The North Carolina Criminal Justice Education and Training Standards Division recently announced that Megan Styron um, who is our city accreditation manager for the Greenville Police Department, had been selected as an assessor for the North Carolina Law Enforcement Accreditation Program. As an assessor, Megan will review files, conduct site visits to other North Carolina law enforcement agencies as they work to obtain their designation from the NCLEA program. In addition, Megan has just completed the certification through Power DMS, professional program. Power DMS is a platform that the police department uses to manage and connect policies, training, and accreditation. The certification means that Megan has achieved, achievement validates her advanced knowledge of and expertise with Power DMS. So please join me in congratulating Megan. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.
go. Hey, why don't you guys all come up here with me? So as many people are well aware, we just had our election that just com was completed on Tuesday. And we had two city council representatives that uh, elected not to run in this year's municipal elections. And so we are, tonight we're going to be saying goodbye to two outstanding council representatives that have represented the city of Greenville for a little bit over four years, about four and a half years. Um, I cannot say enough great things about these two gentlemen. Uh, they're incredible leaders for our community. The city of Greenville uh, should be very uh, thankful for their leadership over the last four plus years. Um, I can say that uh, it has been a truly an honor to have them on the council and to be able to work with them. And I will truly miss both of them. I can say that it has been an outstanding uh, relationship through the council. I think we've all worked really well. I think anybody that has come or watched our meetings you can see that we all do really do genuinely get along and we like each other and we always try to come to a consensus to be able to find a way to make things work and it has been an honor to have these two gentlemen on the council and i'm thankful for their leadership i'm thankful for all the things that we've been able to accomplish over the last four plus years but tonight we get to uh, give you a nice plaque and say thank you uh, for your time on the council and uh, i've got the other council members i want to say a few words as well so Congratulations. Great. Um, let me see. I don't know city council without you guys. So I'm really going to miss you, but I thank you for your leadership. I thank you for your patience with me. And I thank you for choosing me as I got started on this journey. Guys, I said a little bit at uh, the, the last meeting in, uh, I guess, April, but just have appreciated working with y'all, echo a couple of the comments from the mayor. You know, it's been great for all of us to be able to work together, um, you know, across any sort of different uh, ideologic view, ideological views that we have about government. And so it's re been really good to see the team work throughout the last couple of years. Thank you for your service. Uh, I just want to say I know neither one of you guys signed up two years ago to lead the city through a global pandemic. Uh, so... Uh, thanks for that. We really appreciate it. Uh, John Adams wrote a letter to his son, and he said that the, the business of the people must be done by someone. And if good men, if honest men refuse, others will not. And if wise men decline it, others will not. So as good and wise and honest men, thank you so much for what you've done. Awesome. Thank you. Now your turn to speak. Um, well, first and foremost, I would like to thank... Um, City Manager Wall and her staff and uh, all the employees of the City of Greenville for doing a wonderful job in um, keeping Greenville running. Um, we have um, excellent leadership here at the city and, and it shows when you drive around Greenville. So um, it's been a pleasure to um, work with um, you and your staff and the rest of the employees. I mean, we have um, top talent here and uh, I hope it continues. I really, really do. I'd also like to thank my fellow council members. Um, you know, I don't think that you could go around the state of North Carolina or the United States and find a group of people that um, get along as well as we do and work together as well as we do. And uh, I think that's really important for efficiency in government and for progress in government. And um, it's been awesome to see and work with here. It really has. I'd also like to thank my family uh, my wife and my daughter. It's her birthday today, and I'm missing her birthday um, for another city council meeting. But, um, you know, it, it's been a sacrifice of my time and, and my family's time, but it's been well, well worth it. You know, when I started this four and a half years ago, it was to serve and give back to the community, and that's, um, that's what I feel like we, we, we've done, and, and we all do that, and we all sacrifice. So thank um, each and every one of you for your continued sac sacrifice, and um, I appreciate your good leadership, really do. I'll start where uh, Litchfield ended off and thank my family. Um, Litchfield mentioned the sacrifice that you make. And, and the, the best, av uh, best ability is your availability. And I was suffering between trying to make it here and be with my kid and be with my family. And it just came down to what matters most to me. Um, it's not an indictment of anybody in this room or the council members or mayor up here. I will miss them. I will miss this. 
but my family is more important. And it just became so tough to uh, try to navigate and balance it all. So that's in case anybody was wondering why, this is why he's missing his kid's birthday tonight. I mean, this is a, it's, it is a sacrifice, but I did it to uh, provide some service to the community. Um, everybody has been extremely professional throughout the time that I've worked for the city. I think I'm very lucky to work with such a great staff and Ann Wall's great manager, one of my favorite bureaucrats ever. She doesn't really like the word bureaucrat, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, to my council members, I, I, I think every council needs a Rick Smiley. Um, I, I think you do such a good job of keeping us together. Uh, Belle, um, you were so uh, vibrant when you got on the uh, council and the fact that you were able to organize and rally so many people to make the community a better place, particularly when you were in District 3. Now you're obviously going to be replacing me. Um, I was just extremely impressive to see. And Monica, I pushed for you to be on the council because um, I saw you out in the community doing community work before you ever made the decision to do this. And when I saw you out there, I was like, that's the lady that needs to be on council. And then. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't know if there'll ever be a harder working mayor, but I'm proud to have worked alongside you. Um, it, it's great to have met all of you. I didn't know any of you before I got on city council. Uh, I met you just through doing this. But for, but for my buddy here at Litchfield, we do go back. We are old college friends, and he's the only one that I did know. But we knew each other so well, we didn't realize that we had both decided to run for District 5 at the same time. So. That's why at the last minute I had to pull out and run for the at-large seat on the uh, Greenville City Council. Um, I'm going to uh, say farewell. Uh, I'll still be around. And uh, if you need to complain about the city, um, these are my friends right over here to my right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I would just say on behalf of the city staff and um, the other 750 employees for the city of Greenville, we can't do it without the council, and we truly appreciate the support of all the council. But um, for the last four and a half years, it's been um, with Councilmember Litchfield and Councilmember Meyerhofer. We thank you for your service to this community. As, as Councilmember Smiley said, it takes all of us to do this work every day, and you all have certainly committed to it, and we just can't thank you enough. And we wish you well. We know you won't be strangers, so let us know what you need. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. We'll move on to the public comment period. But this is a public comment period. It's a period reserved for comments by the public. Items that were or scheduled to be the subject of a public hearing conducted this meeting or another meeting during the same week shall not be discussed. A total of 30 minutes is allocated with each individual being allowed no more than three minutes. Individuals who register with the city clerk to speak will speak in the order registered until the allotted 30 minutes expires. If time remains after all persons have registered have spoken, individuals who do not register will have an opportunity to speak until the allotted 30 minutes expires. Madam Clerk, our first speaker. Mayor, our first registered speaker is Marion Blackburn. Ms. Blackburn, you have three minutes to address the, the mayor and council. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Members of city council, my name is Marion Blackburn. And um, I live at 802 River Hill Drive. I'm delighted to be here tonight. Since there isn't a public hearing on this item, it is the uh, new animal ordinances. I'm just gonna speak for a few minutes to say that uh, I appreciate the support of the Greenville City Council as uh, Animal Protective Services Division led by Officer Joe Brees and under the supervision of Police Chief Holtzman completely modernized their animal welfare ordinances. Here they are. I have read them. And um, they're really good. 
I want to say that um, Officer Reese, I know he really did a lot of footwork and a lot of research, again, under the supervision with the support of Chief Holtzman. There were a couple of public meetings during which some concerns arose, and they met with us, and we had a conversation, and in what can only be described as an extremely rare coming together, I can say that probably 98% of the questions or the concerns, the issues that, that were stated, we came to agreement on, if not 99%. Um, again, just want to uh, uh, share uh, a couple of observations about these ordinances. Um, they really modernize Greenville's uh, approach to animal welfare. That means that these ordinances really address animal protection in a genuine and authentic way within the limits of the law and that's tricky because there's a lot of things you'd like to there's a lot of things I'd like to do what does the law allow where is their precedent and, and officer Brees did his work to find out where that area is that sweet spot um, so there's a lot of really good um, uh, changes and a lot of good things that these ordinances put in place um, Now, when you put something like this into practice, there may be some bumps. And we've discussed what some of those bumps may be. They may not be bumps, and if so, that's fantastic. There is that good open channel of communication between animal advocates in our community and Animal Protective Services. And again, I applaud them for their openness and their willingness to talk about these things. And we've agreed that, you know, if something comes up, we need to talk about it. We certainly will. We'll keep those lines of communication open. We've also discussed the difference between having an ordinance and how the ordinance is administered. And so we're aware that some things may change when these things are put into place. So finally, in conclusion, I would just like to say that uh, this is a really nice set of ordinances that I fully support given what we know at this time about how they'll work once they're put into place. And on behalf of myself and other animal advocates, I'd like to say that I support them and appreciate the council's allowing this to take place and the council's support this evening for them. Thank you. All right, thank you. Congratulations on your victory and looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Our next registered speaker is Don Cavallini. Mr. Cavallini, you have three minutes to address the mayor and council. Well, considering the last comment, I guess I should congratulate the people who were reelected, um, and thank you for your service, those who are choosing to go off to council, and Ms. Blackburn, congratulations. Each of you were elected to be representatives of the people. It's your obligation to do the due diligence of studying major projects proposed by staff to see if that plan is in the public interest. You've not done that. With regard to Compute North's plan to locate huge supercomputers for the purpose of data mining for cryptocurrency, you've chosen to change the zoning ordinance to allow that to happen. I'm not the first person, nor am I the doing this the, for the first time, asking you to reverse that ill-fated decision. Most people know that Compute North has withdrawn, at least temporarily. We hope for good. We want it to be for good, and the only way that can happen is if you change that ordinance. So it was first, it was Belvoir, 1,500 yards from Belvoir Elementary School. And now it's the city of Greenville Industrial Park, not far from Welcome Middle School. Where is your concern for the human beings, most of whom are black and brown? They'll be subjected to 65 to 95 decibels, and that's noise pollution 24-7. As city council members, you also have a fiduciary responsibility. As I understand that, you're the legally constituted body 
who allowed our Greenview Utilities Commission to provide services exclusively. You and the county have allowed this monopoly based on trust. In doing this, you assumed they would do the right thing. They did not. They and the Eastern North Carolina Alliance solicited Compute North. Compute North didn't go looking for you. You went looking for them in order to pollute our community. You would never consider citing such a monstrosity near Brook Valley. Fiduciary responsibility means you see th that the mission of the organization is carried out in the manner intended, and you check the books. Right, Mr. Smiley? Not just the finances, but the practices of Green U U Utility Commission. If you truly checked out the That's data mining time. scheme for cryptocurrency, you would not have voted for it. All finances, especially in the public sector, are submitted to a periodic audit. An audit does not simply check balance sheets. It checks to see whether the, the city or the board, in the case of the Greenville Utilities, uh, and the CEO makes a proposal that's in the public interest. There needs to be a public audit, a people's audit. Someday we'll have it. And whether you believe that you will be judged by a higher power as you appear before maybe the pearly gates of St. Peter, or just judgment will come someday in some manner. You will be judged. Thank, thank you, Mr. And Carolina. Mr. Cannon will be judged. Thank you, thank you, Mr. It's Carolina. not too late to reverse not only an abomination of our community, thank you, Ms. but also a very unwise business decision. Thank, thank you, you, Ms. Scavlin. Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Mayor, our next speaker is Jalen Lampa. Mr. Lampa, you have three minutes to address the, the, the mayor and council. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate everyone who won the races, be elected or otherwise. Thank you. And I speak on behalf of NOTRA. Now, while we celebrate this brief reprieve from Compute North, I want to remind all of you that we are not going anywhere. NOTRA was originally founded to protect the environmental and economic, social economic well-being of the communities west of, in West Greenville. And our intention is to work with other communities who have faced such issues to form a coalition to, well, support each other. While I won't speak too much on crypto mining today, I feel it is my duty to remind you that we will be monitoring all, all issues that are in relation to this. And should such an issue come up again, we will be here to protest on the behalf of our people. I hope in the future all of you can make more informed and equitable decisions for our community. Good day. Thank you, Mr. Lampa. Madam Clerk, our next speaker. Mayor, we don't have any additional registered speakers. All right, anyone else that'd like to speak during the public comment period, please come forward, state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Seeing none, we'll close public comment period. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Madam Manager. Thank you, Mayor. The consent agenda includes the following items. Minutes from the March 14, 2022 and the March 17, 2022 City Council meeting. A con item number five is a contract with news personnel for temporary staffing services for the GK Butterfield Transportation Center. Item number six is an ordinance and reimbursement resolution amending Greenville Utilities Commission FY21-22 budget and various capital projects. projects. Um, item number eight is an interlocal agreement with the Pitt County Board of Education related to the red light camera program. And item number nine is an authorization to submit a U.S. Department of Justice 2022 body cam, body worn camera grant application. The consent agenda, Mayor. Thank you very much. Move to approve. Second. All right, motion has been made by Councilmember Smiley, second by Councilmember Daniels. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion passes 5-0, Mayor. All right. Thank you very much. We'll move on to item number seven. And I will, I'll turn this over to 
uh, Donald Phillips, our city attorney. I believe he has a, I guess, alternate motion. Good evening, and yes, uh, mayor and council members, on behalf of the city attorney's office, I recommend and request that city council move to approve the amendment to the agreement with the American Traffic Solutions, Inc., related to the red light camera program and that the city attorney is authorized to make any other revisions deemed necessary to bring the amendment to the agreement into compliance with recent North Carolina Court of Appeals decision in Farrington versus City of Greenville. Move to approve. Second. All right, motion has been made by Councilmember Smiley, second by Councilmember Meyerhofer. Any discussion questions? See none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Motion passes 5-0, Mayor. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to old business. Madam Manager, item number 10. Thank you. Item number 10 is the second reading of an ordinance requested by the Police Department Animal Protective Services Unit to repeal and replace Part 2, Title 12, Chapter 2 of the City Code of Ordinances. <coughs> Chief All Holtzman right. will have a brief presentation. Chief Holtzman. Thank you, Madam Manager. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, and uh, we're here tonight to do the second reading and to give you an update. Uh, since our last meeting, we gave uh, council gave us some direction to have some more public input. Uh, we did meet on May 19th with uh, Ms. Blackburn, Dr. Edwards, and I believe it was Haley. Um, they uh, both uh, two of them are here today with us. Had a great meeting, good discussion, covered about eight or ten different points, and uh, we're bringing back some changes uh, to reflect that. The first slide here is what was changed after our first set of public meetings on April, in April. And then the next uh, ones here in blue uh, reflect the, the changes that we made. So briefly, uh, we had some language here to talk about uh, training and education, sort of at the beginning of the ordinance, and then clarified a little bit more at the bottom there uh, at the second arrow relating to uh, empowering the staff to do written and oral warnings as they're going out uh, and administering the, the ordinance. A lot of uh, what was discussed was how do, how do we get from the, the ordinance to the implementation? And a lot of that's trust, and I appreciate the comments that were made here tonight, and it really is a trust relationship when you take an ordinance and you administer that ordinance, and that's where all that feedback goes back and forth. So it really does take a healthy dose of trust, and I appreciate Joe's staff for, for building the reputation that he has. Uh, the second one uh, just uh, speaks uh, briefly of being able to um, keep a stray animal, and that, that is, again, in uh, compliance with uh, North Carolina law. Uh, Joe was quick to add that uh, language to it. The second set, uh, we talked a little bit about the teasing and molesting and what we felt is we could actually just eliminate that one and roll some of that language into the cruelty to animals. That's really what we're after, is just pre preventing the cruelty to animals. So you see there uh, on the second one, uh, where uh, the first arrow there, uh, bait and molest, we just moved some of that language down into that. The, the bottom one, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, when an animal gets uh, struck uh, we wanted to make sure that that was accidentally and unintentionally. When you do run over a domesticated animal, you do have to notify the, uh, the owner of that animal or at least make an attempt and, or report that, I would say. You have to report that to us, I'm sorry, so we can help make some, make some notifications. Uh, the next uh, talks a little bit about our, our trap, neuter, and return program. We know it's a TNR program. We talked a little bit about the vaccinations that have to be done. Uh, to the animal before they're returned, and I uh, actually got a little education on this one. There are actually two doses for the FVRCP, and it's a little hard to catch the cat a second time. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't violating the law inadvertently. They catch the cat, they do the ear tipping and all this sort of thing, give them the vaccination. If they're unable to get the, the cat in the cage a second time because they get real cage-wise, we didn't want that to be a violation of the law. They're attempting to, to do the right thing there with that vaccination. Uh, the number of animals in a home, uh, really, we were focused in on the number of canines, and that ordinance is already covered in uh, the zoning laws under for uh, code compliance under the kennel rules. And that highlights our, our work uh, for, the, for the group. I think we had a great discussion, and uh, we're going to keep an open line of communication going as we begin to roll this one out and administer it in the public. All right. Any questions for the chief? Is there a third reading or does passing it today bring it into ordinance? We're good. Yes. Tonight is okay. brings it into yeah. it's final. All right. Any questions or as amended? 
I move we pass the um, item as amended. Second. All right. Motion's been made by Councilmember Smiley, second by Councilmember Bell. Any discussion? Sure. Any discussion, guys? Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. All right. Motion passes 5 0, Mayor. Thank you. And thank you guys for your hard work. We appreciate it. And thank you for our community members that. Uh, also work together. I mean, I think that is the essence of government is having the community and our staff and our council working in tangent with one another. So thank you guys. We'll move on to new business. Madam Manager, item number 11. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 11 is an ordinance adopting the fiscal year 2022-23 City of Greenville budget, including the Shepherd Memorial Library, the Pitt Greenville Convention and Visitors Authority, and the Greenville Utilities Commission. Financial Services Director Byron Hayes is available for any questions. I was wondering if you could read the whole budget line by <laughs> item. These guys said that they really wanted to stick around late tonight since it's their last meeting. You can make that last meeting really count. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> any questions for Mr. Hayes? It's been a pleasure, Mr. Hayes. <laughs> Not only here, but for this for this uh, Convention of Visitors Authority, too. Any questions? Go ahead. Microphone. <laughs> Can you hear me? The light is on. Okay. You're good. Okay. Just want to um, thank you all for looking into um, ask some questions about Shepherd Memorial Library um, and different things, and thank you for looking into that. and making it possible for me to have a better understanding um, of um, our work with them. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? Anybody want to entertain a motion? Move to approve. Second. All right. This is a great way to end it right here. All right. Motion has been made by Councilmember Meyerhofer, second by Councilmember Litchfield. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion passes 5 0. We Mayor. officially adopted the budget. Is this probably the hi in the history of our city? Is this the earliest we've awesome. ever yeah, adopted it's a budget? Pretty awesome, yes. I don't think so. All right. Congratulations, everybody. Good job, Madam Manager. Thank you. Our assistant city managers, our financial yes. services department, and all of our staff members. Good job, everyone. All right. We'll move on to the city manager's report. The only um, item I would like to do is, again, just express my thanks to Councilmember Litchfield and Councilmember Meyerhofer for your service to the community and tell you that we will miss you. That's it. All right. Let's start with Councilmember Daniels this time. That's exactly right. <laughs> and I appreciate you picking up the phone when I call. So thank you all so much for all the work that you do every day. Uh, we got a couple things. Um, we're calling all ladies to join us on Wednesday for the Pearls and Pink event at South Greenville Elementary School. We will be mentoring young girls and hearts that will also be there, and we'll have some painting and activities going on. There will also be our ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, for the at STEM on June the 3rd at 4 o'clock p.m. at 4 o'clock at 400 Nash Street. Um, and thank you to my two council members that are leaving. I really have enjoyed working with you, I'm learning from you, and growing with you. It's been a long two years, but we survived together. So thank you for all that you've done. All right. Thank you very much. Councilmember Bell. No comment. Wow. Councilmember Smiley. I have no comments, Mayor. Who wants to go first? first. Councilmember Litchfield. Yeah, I said my comments. Oh, oh, sorry. Fire mode. Um, no, I just, you know, once again, just would like to, um, you know, share with uh, everybody in the room and everybody that's watching on, on TV the, the uh, amount of talent that we have here in the city uh, and leadership positions. Lucky to have you, and uh, stick around for a long, long time, please. Thank you very much, Councilmember Meyerhofer. 
I'll echo Litchfield. Thank you, everybody with the staff, uh, once again. And just, uh, it's been my honor. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Glover wasn't here, uh, Ma Rose. Um, so I uh, didn't get to say anything about her. So I, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to say something about Ma Rose. Love her to death. Um, my plan is that when my eight-year-old runs for city council, Ma Rose is going to be up here with him <laughs> still in the next, in, in about 20 years from now. So um, I look forward to uh, seeing her up here for many, many more years. So that is all I have. Thank you uh, to the city of Greenville. All right. First, I want to uh, say uh, congratulations to our ECU Pirates. Of course, they won the AAC. Uh, they are at a 14-game winning streak right now. They play tomorrow. I believe it's the second game. I think it's approximately 1 o'clock tomorrow. I think they play 47 minutes after the first game. But who's, you know, but who's, you know, got the, the details? Um, and they're playing against South Florida, so let's cheer them on. Hopefully they'll continue their great streak and continue that winning streak so they uh, can advance into a regional and super regional and then into the College World Series. I made that prediction earlier this year, so I was feeling a little bit like it might not be working out halfway through the season, but Cliff has got those guys playing really well right now, so we're excited about that. Um, second, I want to say thank you to our outgoing council members. It has been an absolute honor to work with you guys. Um, hands down, you know, it, it, it has been an experience, I think, that uh, I never thought we would have, you know, the connection and the, the uh great working relationships that we all had and the way that we would work together and and be able to you know have fun and joke around and understand that we still get the city business done and i think it's been great and i think it's great for our city and i think it resonates throughout our city so thank you guys thank you to our staff for your hard work your dedication uh, a lot of this stuff does not get done up here it gets done before we get here and so we're thankful for all the work that you guys put in uh, you guys are as our outgoing council members have said are top notch and we appreciate all your service getting a budget passed before june 1st is unbelievable um i know we've sat up here in the past council member smiley and i would get up here and we'd go back and forth with different spreadsheets and talk about all the different changes that we could possibly make and um our assistant i should say our deputy city manager over here uh he's great a little bit because of it uh, yeah so thank you guys for your hard work we appreciate that we're glad that we're able to get it through and also say congratulations to all my colleagues that won uh this last week i think it is awesome to be able to see all the incumbents that ran one you know and that's awesome because i hope that uh, we can continue the good work that's taking place we'll make two new additions to the city council that will fill in uh, but there's a lot of work to be done. We've made a lot of progress over the last four and a half years. Uh, now we've got about a year and a half to make some more progress. Uh, but I'm looking forward to working with our new group. And I'm thankful for all the citizens going out and to be able to voice their opinion and vote for who they felt was best to lead our city moving forward. So thank you, everyone. With that, I'm going to entertain a motion. I'm hoping somebody on this side will give me a motion to adjourn. All right. Motion's been made by Councilmember Smile, or excuse me, Councilmember Litchfield, second by Councilmember Meyerhofer. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Motion passes 5-0. We are officially adjourned. <laughs>